why must man go into space? To explore his world, man has always risked the unknown. My name is Chris Hadfield. Uh, when I was a kid, the very first people flew in space. And it changed my whole perspective of what I might be able to do. Me, this little Canadian kid, maybe I could do that. And looking back now, after three space flights and visiting two different space stations and doing spacewalks and commanding the International Space Station, it was even better than I dreamed it would be. Flying a rocket ship is both exhilarating and crazy dangerous. Three, two, one, zero, and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis. My very first flight was on a space shuttle. Uh, in fact, it was on Atlantis in the fall of 95. The power is, is staggering. It's, it's like 80 million horsepower and you can feel all of them, all of those horses kicking you. This thing starts to, to violently ram you up through the atmosphere. You're crushed in your seat. You're shaken uh, where you can't even focus on the instruments in front of you. But finally, at the end of it, the vehicle has gotten you to just the right altitude. The computers have done their job. They've, they've honed you in on perfectly the right direction. You're just about out of fuel and the engine shut off and you're weightless. It's, it's an amazing transition. It's the most wildly different nine minutes of my whole life. And the best part is that's just the start of space flight. And I've spent about half a year off the earth, most of it onboard space stations. At 6 a.m. the alarm would go off. I'd wake up in my little sleep pod. It's weird, you have to sort of scrape the sleepers out of your eyes because without gravity, things don't drain properly like into your tear ducts and evaporate. And then everyone would grab some sort of quick breakfast. Everything's in little packets, pre-packaged, you know. Uh, your coffee, it doesn't come in a, in a cup like this one. Your coffee comes in, in a pouch uh, with a straw. And then we would talk to mission controls all around the world. Station, this is Houston. And each of them would tell us what's going on today, the important stuff, the priority stuff, see if they had any questions. And then we'd split. All six astronauts working all the experiments, working all of the, the maintenance that had to go on. Maybe you're talking to the president today. You gotta get ready for that, get the camera set. Maybe you're helping to make an IMAX movie, or you're running a nanoparticle experiment, or seeing how flame behaves without gravity, or, or looking at the radiation environment, or testing a new piece of equipment that removes carbon dioxide from the air. Or the, we run about 200 experiments always on the space station. So here's a soaking wet washcloth. And then your body's floating around weightless, so you gotta exercise two hours a day. Plus you have emergency drills. At any moment, you may have to save everybody's lives. A fire, or a puncture in the ship, or contaminated atmosphere, or somebody getting electrocuted or something. So we constantly have drills and exercises to keep everybody sharp. And then hopefully, amongst all of that, when, it, when the clock says bedtime, you still have enough energy that you can get to the window and take some pictures of the world. Or notice just what a cool place you're in. They're, they're, the NASA psychiatrists put a guitar up on the space station because we're just people up there. Music is fundamental to, to mental health. When I was supposed to be asleep, if I still had any energy at all, I would take that guitar and play all the songs that I knew. This rocket's burning bright We'll soon be out of sight Something to give you a... Uh, a thread of normality in an incredibly technical and demanding life. And when all that's done, you close the little doors on your sleep station, you're floating weightless in your sleeping bag, just tied to the wall with a string, you shut off the lights, and effortlessly, deliciously, comfortably drift off to sleep.
Space Station is a wonderful, very hard earned and proven example of how we can explore the next stepping stones in space together as a species. I mean, it's weird for 15 countries cooperatively to be doing anything for decades at a time and, and doing it peacefully and cooperatively. And yet Russia and England and Germany and Japan and the United States and Canada and all the other partners, we've been doing that on the space station since the early 90s, every single day, hand in glove. And so as we go from the space station where we've tested equipment, done experiments, learned how to work together, now it's time where we can sort of sail over the horizon with our next spaceships. It's an amazing start of a whole new era of human capability and evolution. And the rocket ships that we're building and flying right now, the ones I've had a chance to fly, they are just the initial enablers of all of that.